All right, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nysarius. Let's get this video started. So, first things first, I just want to say that this video is primarily intended for either new players or players who are looking to farm materials in Odyssey for the first time. Because, as you probably already know, Update 14 has split uh, the 4.0 version of the game and the 3.8 version of the game. So, the old method of, you know, just going to a, a, a potted geological site is no longer available if you want uh, materials in Odyssey. Now, with that said, another thing to mention is if you're looking for an in-depth guide on how to, you know, you know, what planets to look for for certain material, like what type of planets, or, you know, how to use the DSS to distinguish between different shades of blue, or none of that, this video is going to be focused on getting you to an already known pocket of raw materials, of high-grade raw materials, get you those materials, get you out, get you done with your material farming as fast as possible. If it sounds like what you're looking for, then stick around. Now, I first want to mention a few things for the sake of newer players. First, make sure you remember to bring an SRV. Uh, simply install an SRV hanger in your optional internals and make sure you put an SRV in it, and then you'll be good to go. And also, the way you actually collect materials with an SRV is you must, we'll take crystalline clusters as an example. You have to first shoot the crystalline cluster. Uh, it'll be targetable. So you target, you shoot it, and then it'll fall to the ground as an actual material. You then target that material, you have to target it, and then drive over that material with your SRV with the cargo scoop deployed. It's a little uh, convoluted and tedious, but you'll get used to it. Another thing I want to mention is that you'll only be getting grade four, the highest grade materials from doing this if you go to the sites I lead you to, or that I uh, direct you to. And essentially you'll want to trade these higher grade materials for the lower grade materials if you, when you need them. This is much, 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 much faster than actually farming the lower grade materials and will save you a lot of time. So you can do this to any raw material trader. You can just simply look that up. Now, getting into it, for all the materials except for selenium, you'll be looking for crystalline shards. And on those crystalline shards will be crystalline clusters. Those will be the materials you're looking for. Now, for selenium, on the other hand, you'll be looking for brain trees, which will be looking for polyporous growth. One thing to mention with the polypore, uh, with the brain trees, I mean, is that not all of them will have polypores growth. They can have other things. Now that said, the sites I will direct you to only have polypores growth. Now uh, speaking of, I will have a list um, of planets with coordinates in both the description and hopefully, if I remember, also in a pinned comment. Uh, again, with a list of planets and coordinates on those planets on where you can find large amounts of materials. Now, if you're spooked by the mere mention of coordinates, don't worry. I have a guide. The next section of this video is actually a guide on navigating via coordinates. And that said, there's a few other things I want to mention. Uh, first, the crystalline shards are about 1,500 light years out of the bubble. If you're a new player, that's quite a trip to make, and it can take a pretty good chunk of time. Now, the brain trees, on the other hand, are only about 300 or so light years out, not nearly as long of a distance to travel. But on the bright side, if you do this once and you really stock up, like completely stock up, which is very easy to do, you will only need to do this once every few months or so, if you're playing actively. I mean, unless you just really burn through raw materials, but it should last you quite a while. And that's gonna be pretty much it for this section. So next, let's talk about navigating via coordinates. So coordinate navigation is the most difficult part of this process, but it's really not as bad as it seems if you just break it down into a few smaller problems. Now, when you first enter orbit, you're going to have a few things added to your HUD. To the right, you'll have your altitude meter, and below your altitude meter will be your latitude and your longitude. I'll refer to those as X and Y respectively going forward, so X is the top number and Y is the second number above your gravity. Now, at the top of your screen, you'll have a small compass added. And at the center of that compass will be a highlighted number. That's what we'll call your direction. And this is the number you need to focus on towards getting you towards the right coordinates. Now, if you look to the left of the screen, I have this big sort of totally not scotch graphic put up. And it shows you which direction increases your coordinates in which way. And I'll just sort of explain my process for this. So as I enter orbit, I'll first look at my Y value. If I need to increase my Y value, I'll turn to 90. If I need to decrease my Y value, I'll turn to 270. And then I'll look at my X value. Do I need to increase my X value or do I need to decrease my uh, X value, right? If I need to increase, so let's, and I'll just give a small example. 
let's say I need to increase my Y value and my X value. So I'll turn to 90 and then I'll turn to say 45. This has both my X value and my Y value increasing. And once one or the other is correct, let's say X becomes correct first, I'll turn back to 90. If Y becomes correct first, I'll turn to zero slash 360. Same thing in this case. Now, a few things to know about coordinates like this is that uh, the X value goes from negative 90 to 90. So don't forget to, to you know, accommodate for negatives and it will roll over. And respectively, the Y value goes from negative 180 to 180. Again, don't forget to you know, consider for negatives and do this a few times and you know, you'll get it worked out just fine. I swear it's really not that difficult. I feel like I've done a pretty poor job of explaining it, but I'm honestly bad at explaining things in general. Uh, but I hope you found that helpful. Now I've got a few final tips for you once you actually do get down on the planet at the coordinates you need to be at. Uh, so stick around for those. Now, once you're down on the planet and you're ready to start gathering materials, I've got a few bits of advice for you. And the first is going to be to just turn off drive assist. I don't know why, but drive assist just makes the SRV so much more clunky to drive. It handles so much better, they're so much more responsive without drive assist on. It just makes it much easier to navigate, especially around in these, you know, the crystal shark forests or these brain tree forests. It's so much easier to navigate around without the drive assist on. And you won't even notice it's off um, other than the fact that it'll be literally easier to drive. Now, the second bit of advice I want to give you is going to be able to use turret mode to actually sort of target and, um, you know, shoot materials. Um, it's easier to lock on materials. It's easier to just see materials in general. It's just easier in general. Just use turret mode. You won't regret it. Now, this third bit of advice I'm going to give you is a bit more prevalent here in the brain tree forest than in the um, um, the crystal shard forest, but it's relevant there as well. Is to use your jets to if uh, there we go. This is what I was looking for to happen. So sometimes materials will get stuck in the trees like this, right? And what you can do when this happens is essentially just drive up to the tree and you know boost up. <laughs> and more often than not, you can get the materials. Now I'm full on all my materials, so I can't grab that. Uh, but more often than not, this will get you any materials that get stuck either in a burning tree or in a crystal shard. And you know, this will really stop you from missing out on a lot of materials. And the last bit of advice is mostly for the crystal shards, but sometimes the game really doesn't like um, to uh, let you shoot things off with the SRV for some reason. If that happens, simply pop into, you know, on foot, pull out your gun and then, you know, go, go shoot it uh, with your gun. Sometimes that happens. You can just, unfortunately, you can't pick things up on foot. Very, very unfortunate. Wish they would change that. But just, you know, hop in your suit and just shoot it with your gun. And that's going to be pretty much it. Um, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's all I really had to talk about. I'm trying to keep this nice and short and simple. Um, again, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys in the next video.